I'm going to rebroadcast this remarkable piece of audio into the public domain to my viewing audience and any other audiences out there who find this in their lap. It's an audio piece taken from a courtroom in Australia. If you are completely new to this, then I can assure you that you may not know what's actually taking place. For the people that know about this subject matter, this audio piece restores confidence that awareness about this matter is making itself very well known. Listen to this gentleman's words very carefully. I can't express this enough. Listen to the words he's using to the judge. It is a chess game and each take turns with very specific rules and terminology. The language spoken is at the utmost importancy. If you don't know what language to use, you'll often find yourself in a horrible checkmate with the court. At the end of this audio, I will guide you to the sources who are a wealth of information about this subject. They have helped me understand this material so much better, and I can't thank these individuals enough. They are some of the biggest names in this field who are well known and well respected for their knowledge and research. It may take you a while to get a grasp of this new type of information, but once you begin to get it, a whole new dimension and a whole new world of information begins to open up to you, and you'll see and feel firsthand why this is so important to many of us because it impacts everyone and everyone you've ever known. Master Spires to you, sir. Yes, sir. And may I address the... I'd like to address the clerk of the court before you go anywhere. Don't have the right, do I? You appear today charged with some offences. What do you wish to do about that? Um, I'd like to, first of all, I'd like to submit my person into the court. I surrender the citizenship into the court. I'd secondly like to notify the magistrate that I stand on the sea with a first birth certificate, and I'd also like to stand on the land with a second birth certificate. Hence, I like to make point to the Crown on the bottom here. So now that I've surrendered my citizenship to the court, I'd like to advise you that you may be work walking into a trust, days on tort. I can also bring a tort of defamation on this court. I'd also like to make the court aware that there is a commercial lien against this magistrate's court. Your name may not be on it, sir. Commercial lien? A commercial lien. Right? I have six magistrates on this lien. Before you, before you address this court, sir, you have something to address before you. You have no right to be where you are. Right? I'd like some ID, sir. I have my own birth certificate to be on the land. I have my own birth certificate to be on the sea. I surrender my citizenship to the court. Now I ask you, before you start this case, where's your ID, sir? There's no bail, Your Honour. Well, are you, Your Honour? Where is your ID, sir? Your court was asked for ID in March. March. It is now November. Are you able to provide me with ID to give you authority to sit on that bench? said to have occurred in October. Why are we talking about March, Mr. Speaker? A different case, Your, sir. Let's not worry about different cases. Well, no, let's worry about what this says here, right here, Your Honour. This here, this which asks your magistrate's court for the legitimacy to be here. Is this a matter that bail was granted at the bail? Excuse me? I was told in the court hearing last time when I was arrested no bail would be set and I was asked to leave through the front door. Now you're telling me bail is set. I was also told in the last hearing that I was supposed to be here at 2 o'clock. I come in this morning at 9.30 to submit paperwork to be told I'm here at 10 o'clock. Are you trying to withhold me from this court because of this paperwork, sir? Mr Spires, are you pleased to make your way till 2? We'll do that. Thank you. Oh, so now we're going to excuse the matter. Well, you haven't even addressed you this yet. How can, you, how can you enter this court? Are you complaining and, that we're dealing with you now rather than 2 o'clock? No, I'm complaining that you have no ID and no right to be where you're sitting. Because and I would like you, you to prove me with ID to show me that you have the lawful right to be where you're sitting before you even progress any further. You have a motion before this court. It's been before this court since March. And I will not stand down over this. You have a legal and lawful ob obligation to rebut these claims. These claims went to your Chief Magistrate in March. 
Your failure to do so gives you no right to even open your mouth right now. Right? The clerk of the court can address this. You have no right to be there. Right? With this, I will now assign this over to the police prosecutor as trustee of this person. You still have this to address. Your legitimacy to be where you are. Are you willing to come up to me with a writ of commission? An oath? A bond? Who did you sign oath to? Queen Elizabeth II? Are you in usury of my services? Are you the usufructory? Are you doing a trustees on tort here? It's a very simple thing. You ask me for ID. You ask me for ID. Before you go any further, before you go any further, bring out your ID, sir. Where is your oath? Where is your bond? Do you have a right to be behind that bench, sir? And I am very serious here, sir. Do you have a right to be behind that bench right now? Are you a loyal Crown subject? Are you a loyal subject to Her Majesty the Queen? Who do you serve? What master do you serve? What Crown coat of arms do you sit under? Mr Spires, are you defending? I enter no plea yet and you have no right to enter this case until you prove me with ID. How dare you even step into this matter and ask me where I stand when you have no standing yourself, Your Honour? Well, I shouldn't even be calling you Your Honour because you don't have that right. I would like to see the paperwork first. Where is your ID? Right, we get back to this 60 page document served to your Chief Magistrate asking you for this fact back in March. Right, and I do this for everybody in this room because if you have no right to be there, you have no right to try any of these people. Right? That's what this is. I stand on the land, juste jour et solemn natural. I stand on the land, not on the sea. Right? So you can take your Roman you Curia. I will treat your cases as being defended. No, you will not. How dare you enter? How dare you enter a plea? How dare you enter anything in this case until you prove the ID? Do not carry on. Do not carry on. 2014 at 10 a.m. for contest mention. How dare you? This case was ordered dismissed the second the day after, and you're carrying on. You will not prove your ID to me. You will not do anything of the sort. Yet you will carry on. Sixth of January, 2014. Enjoy it, because I won't be there, sir. You have no right to be behind the bench. When am I going to get your ID, sir? See, you forcibly remove me now. See you later. Nothing against you guys. Why was this man so demanding on getting the judge to show him his identification? And why did the judge refuse to present this man with ID to prove his lawfulness to sit on the bench? There is a reason behind this that most of us are completely unaware about. Why did this man strictly declare and clearly emphasize to the court and to the judge that he stands on the land and not on the sea? And even furthermore, why in God's green earth would he nor anyone want to surrender their own citizenship to the court in the first place? If you're completely new to this, then it may not make sense at first. This man asked the judge, is he a loyal subject to the crown? The awful truth is, he is. This is the part where we begin to separate the intrepid from the nothing to see here, business as usual crowd. The fact is, this man is exposing the truth about the court system and how they run 
get away with, and pull the wool over our eyes. You are meant to be free on this planet and not to be bonded, trapped, and enslaved into something you had no say over. This also has a lot to do with your birth certificate and how that one piece of documentation has bonded you into an empire unbeknownst to you and your parents' awareness. Before our birth into this world, others that were here before us had plans for us and they intend to keep these plans as the status quo and to remain unchallenged. I want to point out with great emphasis that sooner or later your research will lead you down to the road to the city of London which is also known as the Crown. Then, oddly, the road will swing to the city of Vatican of all places. Vatican and the Roman Catholic Church, as much as it's counterintuitive to hear this, has something dark to do with the totality of all of this and how we're stuck here today. We all know deep inside us that something is not right in which the way the world is being run. We all know it and we feel it all the time in our core. Something is completely off base with this, and this information is the ticket to understanding how we got here. To learn this information in greater detail, I will point you to some people who I found to be quite remarkable in this area, who I'm sure put in countless hours and have sacrificed a lot just to share with the world what they have learned in order to free us all. Their links and information will be provided in the description box below. I'm going to highlight four individuals quickly and share with you the rest. Jordan Maxwell is the origin for my awareness into this subject. I found out about Admiralty Law through him and the realization about our own birth certificates. Also, his teachings on symbolism is truly remarkable. Kirk Callenbach is someone I recently ran into. His video, Season of Treason, and his birth certificate video will give you a detailed history about America and how it, again, your birth certificate is crushingly important in all of this. Chris from the YouTube channel Bar None 11970. I want to specifically point out his channel mainly because of one particular video he made a while back. It's a highly condensed video that encompasses some of the most vital information you'll need to be aware of. In my mind, it is one of the best videos on the net when first getting started. No other person has impressed me more than the heart of Santos Bonacci. This man has brought more light into this subject matter than one could possibly imagine, in my opinion. If you ever needed an education lesson on this stuff, then this man is well worth listening to. His teaching ability and his ability to connect the dots are truly remarkable. The rest... Dean Clifford, Kate Renee from Kate of Gaia, Dave from the YouTube channel Sensei Dave 8, Maxwell Egan, and Bill Donahue. If you knew any more, then please list them below in the comment section. All of these people who I mentioned have an alive spiritual side to them, and that's why I feel so personally drawn to these courageous individuals. All of us live in unprecedented times of historical changes to our own awareness. I feel strongly that it is our duty in all of us to help free our fellow man and woman from whatever source is trying to hold us back from reaching our fullest God-given potential. If this video has helped you in any way, then please share it with others you care about. Take care. Namaste. Seize the day. Grab it now, folks. Do everything you can. Every single thing that you can. Be proud of your actions to expose all corruption, all suffering, all evil. And <clears throat> remember that we've done this before. You'll be proud one day to wake up and, and to the knowledge that you were once, um, you know, hundreds of years ago fighting against these entities. For instance, we've got examples of the Bogomils, the Waldenses, the Cathars, the Albigenses, the Sicinians. All of these groups were awakened in the Middle Ages and they tried to build communities to, uh, to get away from this horrible, horrible empire of control and overlords, constant overlords, demanding taxes, demanding blood and sweat. It's over. These families, I don't know where they come from. Well, I've got ideas, you know, I mean, there's, there's, 
they've come through portholes and they've uh, they've infested this beautiful planet Earth and they've um, they're a parasite. And we are the true ones. We are the sons of God. We are children of light. We were produced by light. We will return to the light. We serve the light. We serve truth. And we live and die for truth. Never be afraid that you've done something for the truth and you're ridiculed or mocked or hurt because of it.